Once again, welcome to our virtual booth here at ASMS. This is going to be our last activity at ASMS, right? And it's, it's really been a very different ASMS. Um, yeah, so I guess I guess this is this is really your opportunity to ask questions to us. So if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat box. And then we have uh, IMD, we have Ole, with Christian, with Dora. We even have Ole sitting in the back from IMD. And yeah, we are more than happy to, to answer questions uh, if you have any. And we can also talk about the, about different topics if you would like. So I don't know if we should start out about uh, talking about standardization, standard methods. So I guess a big thing here at, at SMS this year is that we have optimized uh, our standard methods. So if you're, uh, if you're already an EvoSet user, you will, you will really see a, a significant performance gain uh, by upgrading to the newest version of the software. Um, I think, I mean, Dora, I guess it's fair to say that, that we have really achieved uh, a significant uh, performance boost. Yes, I think so. Um, but should we show some data, maybe? Yeah, we can So if that. we, if you, Eva, you can put on a slide. And I think, as Nicola said, if you update to the latest version of the plugin, you will automatically get this uh, really good uh, performance. Um, and if you go to slide number nine, it should be that uh, in order to get the best performance, we also uh, updated our column recommendations. So for the very fast methods, 200 and 300 samples per day, we now recommend the four centimeter column with the smaller beads, 1.9 micron beads. Whereas for the 60 and 100 samples per day, uh, our column recommendation is the same with the three micron um, column. Uh, and then the, for the 30 samples per day, we also launched a column with the smaller beats. Um, but to boost the performance even further with the 60 and 100 samples per day, uh, if you take the next slide, we also introduce now a performance column, which um, could you take? Yes, exactly. Uh, which is actually with even smaller beats, 1.5. And in order to keep the back pressure still within a reasonable um, uh, reasonable rates, the uh, inner diameter is also now 150 uh, as for the other um, columns. And as we can see here on the, with the standard column, uh, which is an extracted iron chromatogram of uh, 722 from a BSA load, uh, we can see that we have really nice, sharp and symmetric uh, peaks with the new software. Um, yeah. And I think if on the right side, we, we plotted the same with the performance column. And here we can see that the, the the peaks are even more narrow, um, actually up to up to 60% more narrow if we look at all the BSA peaks uh, in our runs. I guess a fair question here would be why why have we kept our standard column and, and then also pointing to a performance column? I, I think the, the reason why we keep our standard column is that people are very satisfied with it and we know that it's super robust. The 1.5 material, it's a bit new to us, and we would like to get more uh, more results for this. But so far, it looks super robust, yeah. but we simply don't have the... Yeah, no, the true. It's, 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 I, I, think, I think what we've learned over the last few years is that, that the, our standard column has, has really performed, and it's also performed uh, giving a, a lot of, of, of throughput and a lot of, of samples. In a really large cohorts, we've seen customers doing more than 10,000 injections uh, on the same column. And not everybody would, I mean, needs the, these very sharp peaks. You know, some, in some, for some applications, you know, having broader peaks is actually a good thing. And I think even, even with our, our standard methods and also the standard column, we, we have improved the performance quite a bit so that you get more, much more symmetric uh, peaks um, with new methods or new uh, optimized methods. But that said, if you are going for, for, for really high IDs, if, if you're kind of going for the cutting edge workflows, then you see a huge difference. In yeah, that. Yeah. And, and you've done that. You've been working with the DIA and, and really seeing a difference. Yeah, it, uh, definitely. And I think also using the performance column also really boosts the level so that we are exactly on, on level with the home pulled columns, which tends to be just give this minor um, yeah. boost um, but yeah and that's really an important point because yeah. because obviously not everybody can make their own columns and i think it's super important to be able to standardize make sure that the performance that, that we provide you can actually get that wherever you are and whoever you are um so so that's been very important to us to actually have a solution that will you know 
give you the same performance uh, as the cutting edge experts who can pull their own columns and, and, and fiddle around. Yeah. So, so I, I think we've achieved that exactly with the performance column. Yeah. yeah. So, so really important. And that's also due to some of our, uh, the hardware that we have some, uh, to interface um, the, the column with the source. And, and, and we have some pretty good solutions for, for all mass specs, pretty much, uh, at least the most important mass specs, uh, Thermal Broker, Agile and Sykes. Uh, so, so I guess maybe we should have a look at that. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Do you know which slide to go for? I think it's slide number four, maybe? While we're located in the material, uh, we always encourage you to engage with us. So please do not hesitate to put in your questions. This is supposed to be similar to a real booth experience where you get the chance to engage with us, right? Yes, that, yes. That, that's really the point here. Uh, besides sharing relevant new knowledge, obviously. Yeah. It is very different. It's, it's definitely not as it, as it usually is. I'm looking <laughs> forward to kind of next year where we hopefully can meet in person. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we, we have to do, uh, do the best of, of it, make the best of it. Yeah, so I guess, I mean, do you want to, I mean, we can also kind of ask Ole if he wants to say something about uh, yeah, that's the great thing. Here. <laughs> so we also have uh, Ole who's, who's uh, leading IMD. And I, I, yeah, I think it's fair to say that it's been really important for us to actually make these connections and also make sure that they're mm -hmm. easy to use and, and you don't need tools. It's basically finger type connections and all this, right? Yeah, definitely. So going back a few years, making good connections was really, really difficult. And it's absolutely paramount to getting nice peak shapes. Yeah. Right? You'll have a bad connection and then your peak shapes are gonna broaden up to 50% like, like, just like that. And as you said, we've had a number of, of new things coming out uh, with a lot of help from Peter Nielsen and other people. And it makes uh, us possible to make a lead tight bottom connections in all the difficult places, so just before the emitter and just before the column. Yeah. And it's finger tied all of it at this point. And I, and I guess uh, a very important message is really that, that I mean, the technology, the, the core is the same more or less for all the different aspects, uh, but we do have uh, different adapters that will allow you to connect to the easy spray source, to the flex source, to the capture spray source uh, for Bruca, and also the OptiFlow from, from Sykes. I mean, we don't have a lot of experience with this source, but, but in theory, it, it, it should work really nice because it's basically just connecting to, to their solution. So yeah, so as you can see on, on this slide, um, uh, these are the different bits and pieces that you would need. Uh, we have tried all of them uh, and, and they work really well. Uh, one of the latest that we have tried out is, is the one for, for Agilent. And, and that also worked really nice, right? I mean, it was basically just setting up using kind of their nano source, uh, the clamshell. Uh, we had to adapt a little bit, but, but basically uh, we were able to, to fit that with our column and also our steel emitter. And we've got some really, really stable uh, nano flow uh, spray. So I think, I think that's super important. I mean, it's, yeah. it's the heart of the system, right? It so is the you have something that used to be really, really hard. You had the pure silica, you had the sleeve, you had the nut, you had the ferrule. Exactly. Trying to get it all aligned and tightened in one thing, it was virtually impossible unless you were an absolute expert. Yes. But this system that is now available makes it possible for everybody to do. So basically you just follow the instructions and you can't really go wrong with it. Yeah. Yeah. And also because our columns, they have become more and better and better and they're more and more identical from column to column. Exactly. So you were, you were fiddling with this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why was that? So I really like the new extension. Uh, this is uh, from uh, the capsule sprayer for the broker source. Mm -hmm. And the ones that was the original used to have a sort of a, a bore between the column and the new easy, and the easy spray, sorry, the capsule spray emitter. This one, actually, you make a connection directly on the backside of the capsule spray emitter, and it has tremendously gained in terms of chromatographic performance. I don't know if you can see it actually. It's a metal one. So if you are to running broker instruments, you should carefully look at that you would want this exact piece here yes. instead of the traditional one, which has a peak ferrule and peak ending. That's the way you can see the difference, right? So I actually think it's also on the slide, if we can get the slide back. Um, because it's worth mentioning because, because I mean, it is really an upgrade that Bruger has now um, made commercially available. Yeah. And it's, it's worth, if you, if you do have a Bruger instrument, you should definitely make sure to get this one because the connection is, is a lot better and it's, it's a lot more robust. 
So you should be careful. I think I think you should be careful when you handle it, right? Because it's a little bit different. You shouldn't tighten it too much. Or, or can you? Yeah, that's true. But the thing is, so there, it comes with a new connector, which has a one sixteen of an inch ID bore. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you have the right connector. Otherwise, it's not going to be worthwhile. Right. Right. So it comes in in two shapes, and you need to have the right combination. Yeah, actually, you can see it on the picture. Yes, right? yeah, not the connector, but I think it's a good point to, to, to really, really emphasize that. I mean, do you, if you go for this solution, you need the right connection for the connector. For, or, yeah, it is a connector, right? It's just a, otherwise, you're not going to get this uh, this uh, bottom seal yeah, from, from, from the yeah, column to the middle. Excellent. Yeah, thank you very much, Ole. I think, I think that was pretty good. So, if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the chat box. Um, yeah, and we will be very happy to to uh, address them as we go. What else can we talk about? Stuff. Well, you talked about updated standard methods, which I think is obviously something that we are very keen to share because we really see an increase in performance and our users, they seem to be really happy with the stuff we released a week ago. But I think a natural extension to that is probably to mention uh, also the new stuff that uh, we released here at ASMS. Uh, maybe yeah. share a few words on... Well, what? yes, I mean, I, I, I would like to take a little bit back though, because, okay. because really, I mean, Evo said, uh, I mean, it is all about standardization. I mean, it's, it's, it's making this, you know, the best performance available to everybody. And having a standardized platform, that, that's kind of paramount to what we want to do. But what we learned is, is that we can do more than just proteomics. And that's kind of our big release this year, right? So, so, so it was a plus, is going to be a universe of, of standardized methods or specialized methods, really. So, so uh, we have uh, talked about uh, at different events uh, during ASMS um, uh, a lipidomics method, uh, which is way different compared to anything that we've ever done in proteomics, uh, but also single cell. So, this, uh, single cell proteomics, it's, it's obviously still proteomics, but it's, it's really difficult to do. It, it requires the ultimate sensitivity. Uh, and have it, handling these small amounts of sample is, is super difficult to do right so so something that's special something that needs a little bit more attention where we can really use the system to its full potential and, and we are i mean we are using the pumps we are using all the different uh, functionality that we have in the instrument to address these different um, um, applications and we're going to keep building this so i mean this is just a start this is really kind of just kind of the concept of, of being able to, to do this so we've talked, I mean, the, we also have the extended method, which is, it's not a standard method, it's longer, it's not throughput, but it is going to give you this, you know, additional depth to a proteome. Mm -hmm. um, the reason it's, it's a plus is because it's not, you know, it doesn't have that throughput that we really want to, to, to have in the EvoSet uh, one platform. Um, so, so that's available now. The, the single cell and the lipidomics, that's not available just yet. It's going to be available very soon. Mm -hmm. And we are also working on, on other applications. But this is going to be built. I mean, we're going to continue this journey and and, and really you know, add functional, functionality into this uh, this platform. No, I think it, it's it's a very good opportunity to sort of go back because you're completely right. The, the heart of our company was established upon really streamlining and making this technology available to everybody. Because we have experienced being working in in the field for well, some of us 15, some of us 20 years. Uh, how hard it can be and how much hands-on experience is really required to be successful to measure these proteins and peptides, mostly for us. Uh, and, and that's really been essence to us to see, is there a way that we can help standardize a platform so that you know, measuring peptides and proteins becomes easy for everybody? Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's a big part of, of what, how we think and how we build new products. And, and that crystallized on, on some of the new items we put on the street. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and definitely, I mean, it's, it's not just going to be these hard methods that's going to be hard to use. I mean, again, we, we want to make this available to everybody. Mm -hmm. so, so if we release a, a lipidomics method, it's going to be accompanied by, by an SOP that describes exactly how to set up the instrument, how, how to do this. It's going to be, you know, it has an application note that describes what kind of performance are you, you know, should you expect from the method. And it should be everybody, right? Everybody who is kind of working in this field should be able to use that particular method. Mm -hmm. Again, kind of coming back to making things available um, to everybody. Do you want to share a few data points from it? Yeah, no, I think uh, if, if I can get the next slide, because, because as I said, we have uh, already uh, had uh, a few presentations uh, throughout um, ASMS. Um, 
but but I guess uh, the method that's available now is the extended method. Um, it it was not you know part of the EOS of, or at least not part of the initial EOS of concept. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was really, really something that we heard from a lot of customers that they wanted, they wanted to have, be able to run these, you know, slightly longer gradients to, to go deeper into the proteome. So that was why we we, we developed this 88 minute gradient. Uh, I think it's a really good compromise uh, between kind of being able to go deep and still having kind of the robustness um, uh, throughput, not so much, uh, but still you can you can actually run these gradients uh, with a relatively low overhead. I mean, overhead time is is killing these long experiments because. It's just, it's just basically time that Mastec is doing nothing. So, so the the, the, uh, the, the method is available. Uh, you can download it now um, if you if you get the new software release. And that's probably another point I should uh, make is that that these uh, EOSA Plus methods are available to everybody. It's not something it's not something you need to go and buy. So, so as they become available, they will be uh, launched and they will be put into um, uh, the software so that you can go in and you can enable. It's really easy to enable. It's basically just to go into the start menu uh, and then go up to the EVOSET Plus uh, icon. And then from there, you will launch an installer. And then you can choose uh, which EVOSET Plus method you can. It's actually very much similar to if you look at other companies in other industries. We got one of our users who compared us to, oh, you guys do like Tesla. Yeah. They just upgrade the car and then suddenly yeah. you can do something more without paying for it. And I guess our approach is as well, you know, we have this platform where the hardware is fixed, but, you know, we learn. That there are new things that you can do with it that, that really benefits from the way it's configured. Yes. And we release that obviously to our customers. Yes. Yeah. 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 So so I think you should definitely, I mean, if you're already an EOSET user, you should check it out. We also have an application note that will give you a pretty good idea of, of the performance. Uh, so you get some data, you can have a look and, and see pretty much what to expect from this method. And again, this is gonna be available for all different uh, EOSET plus methods as they're launched. They will have you know supporting material that'll give you an idea of, of what to expect from them. So if we go to the next slide, um, as I mentioned, we, we've also done, uh, uh, or we've worked with the team in, in Martin Street, the TS Management team, uh, spearheaded by Catherine, um, on lipidomics. I think, I think it's been a fun challenge for us because it was, it was so different. Different solvents, uh, lipids, you know, lipids have always, always been problematic for pe people doing proteomics. Um, but we got kind of involved in the project and, and we found some really neat features um, and, and there's some huge benefits of, of working with lipids on, on a tip. So immobilizing the, the lipids on a C18 tip make them so much more stable compared to having them in, in a liquid. Um, uh, so I think, I think that's really one of the huge benefits that we, we found from this, right? So, so all of a sudden we have a much more robust setup, something that you can run for for many, many hours, you can even kind of run, you know, uh, over days uh, without really worrying about your sample going off. So it's mm -hmm. super important. And at the same time, we were able to pretty much, you know, get, get to the same level or uh, actually completely the same level as, as Catherine has previously shown uh, with other NLC systems. So super exciting. I mean, we, we, we're able to kind of uh, identify uh, up to, I think it's depending on how you see it, um, almost a thousand lipids actually uh, in, in different lipid classes. Um, and to me, that's extraordinary. Right? And I think, I think in this field, it's, it holds so much potential, especially kind of going to the clinic, kind of looking at the lipids, you know, from plasma, from, from urine. Uh, I think it's one of the yeah. applications that really benefits from what you would say standardization. That's yeah. because, you know, it's not easy to work with these. It is not easy and, to work. And if there is a way to easier just being able to measure yeah. what's in your, well, in this case, body fluid, but something else, then, yeah. Exactly. That will be a benefit. And I think so. So uh, you can actually find on the ASMS website, you can find Catherine's talk. She did a talk. Um, very nice talk. Very nice data. I think it's, it's super interesting. So so I really encourage you to check that out. Um, and I guess the last method, which is also something that we've found a lot of, of, of uh, or seen a lot of interest in, is a single cell method. Mm -hmm. um, super exciting stuff. I think I think uh, we've been working uh, together again with Matthias Mann's team, uh, spearheaded by Andreas uh, in Martin Street. And um, I mean, this was completely not what we wanted initially for, with EOSET, right? I mean, we wanted high throughput, we wanted uh, higher flow rates to really support robustness. Um, but again, having having these preformed gradients, it, we found that it's so much easier to make, you know, very small volume gradients and then actually use these at very low flow rates. Um, so, so the work that, that uh, we've done uh, at least up, up until a few weeks ago was was all done at kind of from 40 to 70, 75 nanometers per minute. 
Um, the data that you see on this slide is, is at 75 nanoliters a minute. And really what we found is that we can, we can do this extremely uh, robustly. Uh, and, and working, I mean, notoriously, it's been super difficult to work at these flow rates uh, robustly. I mean, you can do it. You can, I mean, it's handhold, it's, it, it's expert. Um, but but we, we, we kind of got up to this and, and got more and more excited as, as we, we uh, continued the work. And, and, and based on, on, on gradients, we were also able to kind of see, you know, you know, you know, at least performance that was kind of in the right ballpark. Mm. Um, and as we can see on, the, on this slide, I mean, even from, from you know, 1.5 uh, nanograms of, of ELA, we were kind of reaching the 1,000 proteins. So it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not the depth that we want, but it's definitely a good start. And I would say that, that a lot of things has happened even in the last two or three weeks. And, 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 and this is going to be super interesting. I think, I think the, 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 we, are, we are just only discovering right now uh, how well the EOSET technology is suited for this kind of work. Definitely. I think from my perspective, there, there are two comments at least. One is conceptually, when you think yes. about how we've tuned up our instrument, the configuration on its own seems really keen or developed, designed for something like that, because you have that pre-pump gradient and you have the one pump who delivered and, and sort of thinking about that, it makes sense, logically at least, well, whether it works or not is always different, but there's a logical for me argument that this maybe can work. Well, to be honest, yeah, in hindsight, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it's, it's, in it's, hindsight, <laughs> everything makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But, but again, yeah, I mean, I mean uh, one of the issues with uh, uh, a low flow gradient is, is really mixing online, right? So mm. there's a bit less online mixing low flow gradient super tough i mean that b pump is not going to do absolutely nothing for the first many minutes and and that's really what the evil is i mean we, we can actually make we can create these gradients at, at higher flow rates because it's it's we put it into a storage loop it's, it's ideal and then we just have one pump to make that stable flow pushing it forward so so again in hindsight i i think i think everybody here was was really surprised that that it was so good at doing this. But again, uh, the slide is gone, but but you should check out Andreas also has a talk at ASMS. I think Thor is trying to tell, tell us something. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to ignore it just not to be too distracted. So so I think I think <laughs> I think one of the things that's also happened, I think this is I mean that's perfect because you're here, right? Because because we're growing, we're expanding. We definitely are. It's, it's like if, if we take people outside into into our office, it's gonna be messy, it's yeah. gonna be completely full of boxes. I mean, we have no room for production anymore. That, just, that is right. Well, you busy. know, the thing is, we started four years ago, as Evo said, at least, we've been in the group for the longest time. But four years ago, we started here with an idea, or at least an intention to build something more robust in our field. And a few months later, you came up with this new idea that, well, some of us, I'm not pointing fingers, thought that that sounds, it's not going to work, forget about it, Nikolai. And then a few prototypes later down the line, it seems that mm, maybe there's something here. And, and then, you know, the wheel started and, and we developed it, we matured it, we put it on the market. And well, now we're here. We're suddenly in a phase where we see that there's an uptake. Uh, many new customers have come into the EvoSet playing field. I think we passed 100 just recently installed instruments out there, which I'm very proud of. And, and I know you are as well. Indeed. Uh, but Indeed. that also has a side effect, which is that. Uh, we simply can't be in our office anymore. Yeah. It's simply too small for the number of people and activities that we need to, to undertake. So a couple of months ago, we signed a new office. And uh, I think actually you have, you want to show them? I, I have been to the office. It, I mean, that's not going to be live, but I think we should see it. I'm yeah. super excited about this new office. It's, it's a whole new challenge, right? We have to design a new office. <laughs> <laughs> so we're still kind of figuring out where to put what. Yeah. and what we need to install because it's it's still being it's 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 a mess but it's a great great big rooms and and it's just what we need so what, why don't we have a look at that eva can you put that on good yeah excellent and uh and i guess if we go people in the technical room are working but again if you have questions if you have to, if you want to hear about something else than what we just come up with put it in the chat box and we will be happy to address it okay so we are having some small technical... certainly we keep it a secret a little bit more uh, yeah, that's a good thing <laughs> <laughs> these nice rooms yeah but anyway yeah so but there's plenty of more uh, we can talk about and and i i think the, the theme here at sms is, is really that we we have learned so much about uh, how 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 our technology works, 
Um, uh, you know how 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 little issues we're seeing, right? So mm -hmm. so maybe we should address that a little bit later. But mm -hmm. but it is really kind of it's it's all about keeping the systems alive. I mean, one thing is that one system works, but 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 I mean, if and when you run into issues, it's also also about fixing them uh, mm -hmm. fast, right? And and we've put a lot of, of thought into how to design the instruments so to kind of to, to really minimize issues, but also when issues arise, then we can fix them uh, mm -hmm. extremely fast and also very efficiently, uh, and then uh, have people back running again. And I think very importantly, actually, processes it around it. Because one thing is you develop something, you put it on the market, but having done that a few times, you, you quickly learn that no matter how thoroughly you think about it, you will always learn something along the way. And being able to just tackle it quickly and, and yeah. implement uh, Im improved, we whether have it's hardware or software or algorithms, to you know, to increase that robustness uh, is really the key here, yeah. just to handle it. And I yeah. think having been on that journey is uh, is something that you do appreciate to do quick. For sure, no, but it's it's been a learning process. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I think, I think, I think I can I can already kind of spoil it now that that that, that Ulvorm has some some pretty nice slides to show about how we have, we have seen kind of the issues kind of you know going down over time despite our install bases going up. Um, I think I will let the but, but also, over on that. Yeah, I, th I think we should have the video. So I'm, I'm actually... I, I, I guess on that, I think, I think, I mean, the way we have, have addressed issues is really to monitor Ole Tang and his service team. They've been really good at kind of taking in the feedback, you know, putting them forward to to Ola and his team in R&D, and, and we have addressed them uh, kind of going forward. And, and, and you always get things, right? I mean, we have seen kind of things that was kind of, we did not expect it. And then the, 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 the task is really to address them and find a, a, a solution that, that works, right? So, mm. so yeah, I, I think that's some great data that we have, and, and, and we will show them in, in, in just a bit. But I think maybe we have uh, the new Office video, right? No? No. no? That's going to be okay. a cliffhanger for That's the longest time. That's going to be a So why don't we go, uh, 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 why don't we kind of look at... Uh, forget about the nuance. Forget about Why don't we look at the issues, right? Can, can, you, can you put the slides on? Yes. We can. Issues. Issues. Why, why, do we want to, why do we want to talk about issues? Issues. He was at one issues. Uh, really? <laughs> what issues? What issues? Issue? Yeah. Uh, we'll take any slide. Any slide. Any slide. Any slide, any question. <laughs> There we go. There we go. This is a little bit about like a booth, right? It was yeah, no, 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 it's, it's, it's like it's, it's, uh, it's virtual. It's virtual. Oh. Yeah, um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's as Nikolai said, it's it's integral to our thinking that this instrument, I mean, the Evo Set One box is intended for the clinical application labs where you just don't have time to fix issue after issue. So by design and from the very start, we, we we were really trying to get something that was rock solid. And we have, of course, picked some components that by themselves were high quality, rock solid components, but you never know what eventually can fail. And therefore, we've also been very systematic in tracking all the, the failure issues we've seen. And here are, here's a bar graph of all the issues that we have witnessed over the past three years, or, or more, in fact. The, the green part of these bar graphs are all the issues in total. The red ones are the ones seen over the last six months. Despite the fact that the install base has grown, you have to admit that the, the, the red part is a very, very small number of technical issues. If you move to this slide with, with the, uh, uh, it's probably the next slide. The, uh, so this is again tracking the issues, but then as a function of the install base. So what you see in an orange, and, and this slide is now a few months old, but the orange uh, graph is showing the actual install base with the number of instruments out there in the field. And the green uh, uh, graph is showing the number of technical issues divided by the install base. As you can see, it's, point, it's almost linear and pointing down towards zero. And we will continue to work so that it gets as close to zero as humanly possible. It's simply part of our DNA and part of the design objective. We really want to get to that. And some of the things that we've also looked at 
in the design process and the processes around putting out the instrument. If you go like four slides back or three in the slide deck, is the actual consistency of the product. One more slide. So it has been paramount to us from the get-go that the EvoSep One instrument has a consistent quality and is the same from instrument to instrument and provides the same separation uh, performance from instrument to instrument. So last year at ASMS, I was showing this exact data set where we had looked at the retention time for the first 39 systems that we that went through QC. And here we're just tracking the retention time to two uh, arbitrarily chosen peptides from a DSA digest. And what you can see is, is almost the exact same identification time. So if there's a standard deviation for one peptide on about 12 seconds and the other one about 15 seconds. And as I said last year, we were hoping to get below 10 seconds in standard deviation. So if you move one slide forward, this is actually part of the optimization that we've done. It's part of the software. Mm -hmm. So if you do upgrade software, go to the new improved methods, you not only get almost a doubling of your peak capacity, but you also get a much better run-to-run -run reproducibility. So this data set here showing just, just a quick set of runs with a 100 something day method. The, the first point I want to stress is that from injection to injection, we seem to have roughly, and looking across a number of, of different peaks, we have about one second retention time jitter. And if you look at 10 different ego set columns for that method, you actually have four seconds of retention time difference between 10 different columns still on the same instrument. But if you actually take five different ego set one boxes and five different columns and repeat the experiment, you still have less than five second retention time standard deviation. So that, that is really saying that this is the same thing over and over and over again. And the point being that if you are a lab that has 10 instruments, you should expect all 10 EvoSet ones to perform exactly the same across the entire lab. It also means that if you have a collaborator around on the other side of the globe, you can really compare data sets from one lab to the other lab directly on the, the, the LC trace could be the same. It also means that if you take a, a data set that you make today and one that you make half a year from now, they're going to be the same, as long as you, of course, use the same lab. But it's really part of what, what we're trying to get to, where you got the same high level performance again and again and again for everybody. Exactly. And also to reduce the batch effect, you know, in big experiments when no you have to change effect. the color. Yeah, exactly. right. So, yeah, it's, it's, it is really, I mean, I mean, that slide is, is, is really it's encapsulating cool. kind of yeah. what we have tried to achieve with the EVOS at one time. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really kind of the foundation for everything we're trying to do also going forward with the process. Exactly. So, 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 so really nice data. This is, of course, for the 100 samples per day method. Um, it will be different uh, for, for the other methods, for sure. But, but, but I think this, this data uh, speaks for itself. This is just an example of what we're trying to do. Yeah. And, and we will continue our work on standardization, homogenization, improving performance, just getting things better and better and better. And as was said before, you know, it, it's basically a software thing. So, yeah. you, you know, you, you update the software and you get better and better and better yeah. performance. It, 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 so. it, it doesn't, I mean, from the outside, I, I, I mean, the, 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 the hours, the efforts that's gone into kind of getting to this point has, is enormous, right? It's, it's been so many things about calibrating, you know, flow mm -hmm. sensors, you know, figuring out how to calibrate the, the internals of, of the instrument. It's, it's, it's really been, it's been a long, pretty long journey. I mean, we have wanted to do this for a long time, and mm -hmm. I think yeah. everybody was pretty surprised to see how well it actually performed once once we got got to this yeah. point. So, really exciting data, and, and I think uh, especially all of his team in, in IMD has, has has done a, a great job. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But actually, also for workflows, right? So, so DIA is 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 really kind of what Absolutely. a lot of people yeah. are, are doing today, and and to get kind of the ultimate depth, and 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 also having this throughput, you know. Having this very reproducible um, platform is is super important, and I think it's fair to say that we've seen data from both Thermo and, and Booker uh, with DIA passive and, and the DIA uh, uh, approach that that's that's showing you know not only great depth but also really really reproducible data sets. Mm -hmm. Something that's kind of really increased in, 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 since just, just since last year. Just, just makes it so yeah. much simpler to yeah. perform. Yeah, and I think I think actually so. So I know that Daughter has been working uh, 
and, and has produced a, a data uh, or DIA a data set uh, on, on the Explorers 480. And maybe, maybe would you would, do you want to talk about this? Because that's some pretty cool data, right? Hey, I can do that. Yep. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. Um, because I think what we did was just to test all of our standard methods with a standard 500 nanogram load for the EvoSep and the Explorers. Um, and then we uh, analyzed the data of the spectrum now of the latest version. And as you see on the left, the, the IDs are super impressive. But I think what's even more striking is the, the plot on the right showing the reproducibility and the quantification in this data. Because no matter which method, we have around 90% of the proteins which are below a coefficient of variation of 20%. That's cool. And that's kind of the, the standard cutoff for reproducible quantified proteins. So I think that's super amazing and that that, that's what we want, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, having having, you know, thousands of proteins doesn't really matter if no. if, if the CVs are completely. No, and if you want to do clinical, I mean, that's you need to it to yeah. be reproducible and just also the very short methods actually provides this now, and I think that's that's quite striking. Yeah. With the standard columns, you don't need to do any tweaks yourself. Mm. So yeah, yeah, and I, and I guess I mean I mean this slide really shows a data set that's available to everybody right? yes, because exactly. it's 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 the EvoSep, it's our standard columns, it's the Explorer 480, and then you use the the direct DIA using Spectrum. Yes, exactly. No Spectrum so, library is required for yeah. this, so it's completely plug and play. It's without fames. It's yeah. It's without fames, so <laughs> one can boost it even more maybe. Yeah. But but again, I, I think this is this is key that, that I mean this is not I mean it doesn't really depend on how well you you know create a, a spectral library. This is something that everybody can do. It's something yeah. that I mean if, if if you can decide kind of what kind of depth, what kind of throughput you're looking for, and then you can you know put this together and then you can start running you know more or less out of the box. Yeah, yeah. So great stuff. Yeah. And I think I think the same can be said for I mean we have a, a just made an application note with Booker uh, yeah. via passive. Uh, I think we have a, a link on our webpage, and it's definitely also on, on Booker's uh, webpage. And again, here, you know, the, the data are absolutely amazing. It's, it's really impressive numbers. But again, the, the, the reproducibility within the data sets yeah, are yeah, outstanding. Yeah. So, so I think I think you know, it's, it's, it's obviously the workflows, but but it's also kind of the, the, the different instrument platforms that's really starting to you know become super robust and, yeah. and very 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 reproducible. So exciting stuff, I think, really, really exciting uh, things are happening. And, and, you know, if we keep kind of this momentum, uh, even next year is going to be <laughs> super amazing. <laughs> yeah. So again, if you have any questions, um, put them in the chat box, let us know. Um, and, and we'll be happy to address them as we go. But Do could we try with a video? Yeah, we can try a video. Um, I guess I guess we're not going to see the office, right? Is no, we'll have reality? to wait until it's finished. Then. I, I think there's other ways of seeing the office. I think it's, it might be, you know, you can probably find it on YouTube. But <laughs> yes. um, but I guess also the work that Jesper has done yes. is pretty nice, right? So that's uh, maybe we should actually take that uh, explorer's uh, paper um, and and hear what Jesper has to say about it. Let's see. If it works. Still on? Or? We are. We are. Okay. So we are um, we're having fun with the technical stuff <laughs> today. <laughs> so so again. But this... I think what what the video would show would be uh, the latest explorers mm -hmm. launched last year, yeah. which they tested with the different standard methods mm -hmm. and the very uh, impressive data. But I think that might lead to the discussion of our standard methods and which method to choose. Yeah. With like. Throughput versus proton depth because you cannot get it all. <laughs> no, that's a good, not yet at least. 
Not yet. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> no, no, it's, 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 it's a super relevant question, and I, I think it's really one of the questions that, that we have been facing, uh, you know, kind of in the eve of lifetime. Because I, I guess when we started, uh, we started having these very, you know, at, at least at that time, very short methods. It, it was it was hard to convince people that you know throughput and being able to analyze not just tens and maybe hundreds of samples, but actually being able to analyze thousands. Intensive thousand of samples in a data set. That was something that was it was it was, it was a tough sell initially. But yeah. I think things has changed, yeah. and, and that's obviously also because of the mass specs being faster yeah, and, yeah. And, and 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 how we use them and how well these workflows uh, how well they perform. Because we as as we just discussed before, I mean we can actually get a pretty reasonable uh, proton depth using DIA yeah. and, and cutting edge uh, mass spec technology. But, but 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 still, there's this kind of compromise. How deep do I want to go? How many samples do I want to analyze? And I don't. Yeah, I think we have some I think slides. We have, we have a slide. A guy who's running. <laughs> hey, Christian, can you fix that one? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I, I guess if we just look at our standard methods, I mean, I mean, that's the five standard methods, right? Um, ranging from thirty to to three hundred samples per day. Of three minutes to forty-four minutes. No, exactly. I, I think I think when we designed the three minute or three point two minute gradient, three hundred samples per day. I think I think that was uh, that was very ambitious. <laughs> None of us really thought that was ever going to be kind of used for anything useful other than something that was more or less direct injection. But actually, I mean, in the last poll we did, people were actually using this method. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's kind of you know that is you know at least in our world, I think. I guess we had targeted analyses in mind when we did it because. Yeah. A few minutes is a lot of time for target analysis. We just want to have a few peaks, and yeah. for that it'll be super good. Uh, it wasn't, I guess, necessarily thought of as proteomics broad coverage at the time, but now mass specs have picked up speed, and I, you actually the, do get very nice. Uh, with the latest numbers. application of from Bruco and DI passive, I think the the depth they get with the 300 samples yeah. per day that's quite amazing. Exactly, it is. Um, and and I'm 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 really keen to see what what the 480 with things can be used for with the DIY. Yeah. Right? I mean we we haven't done that yet. Nope, nope, I mean, it's on the to-do list. Have... Maybe some of you will actually get to do that for us. But exciting times, yeah. especially for these high throughput uh, workflows. Yeah. And I also think uh, I know that Rudy, for example, has worked with Rudy on on other topics. But but really kind of I mean he's been advocating for you know the value of of adding more samples, more more you know to to, to a data set rather than going deep. Yeah. And, and because it goes, maybe that's some, I mean, I think many people show that we can surpass this 10,000 proteins. Yeah. It's more about using it for something relevant and adding replica. And I think that's yeah. maybe a direction we are we are facing now. Yeah. And as as we start to ask these biological relevant questions, it is you know the, the statistics kind of around this becomes more important. Right? Yeah. And and statistics, I mean, they 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 really. Gain a lot from adding numbers. Yeah. So, so it's it's. I think I think it's it's interesting to see also how our user base is is actually turning more and more to the faster methods. Yeah. They are becoming more and more um, used. Um, so I don't know kind of where this is going to end. I think again, I think the the, the mass specs. So it's clear but, enough though that as you approach the clinical use, it's not a, just going to be about looking at one mouse that you purchase. <laughs> perturb in some manner. It's going to be population genetics yes. that comes into play yeah. and, and in people's everyday lives and ma making experiments with less than 10,000 people, you know, that doesn't necessarily make sense. So you, you are going to see a lot more of these experiments where, you know, you, you will have tens, if not hundreds of thousands of samples that need to be compared somehow. Exactly. So yeah. exciting, exciting technical uh, challenge. Yeah, well, for proteomics, but I'm sure we'll get there. And this is a good, good step on the way. It is, it is a very good step uh, on the way. And I guess what what the slide on the screen is is, is showing, uh, it's it's I I think it's a very interesting way of of looking at the data because what we've plotted here is is the peak capacity per minute or per gradient minute. Um, and obviously, as you kind of squeeze the gradient uh, and still have some pretty pretty good separation, I mean, you you get a pretty high capacity or peak capacity. Obviously, you need the mass spec to be able to, to keep up, and also you need you need to keep the overhead low. It's, it's also one of the things that we do with EvoSet. We really try to kind of not waste time in between samples. Uh, but if you can do that, then you can actually really have, you know really increase the peak capacity 
by going to, towards the shorter gradients. Um, I guess, I guess, his, I mean, traditionally, in the way we, we increase peak capacity is just to do longer gradients, right, and, and, and do, you know, longer columns. And, and, and this is just not the way we want to go if we want to, you know, exactly, go to clinic. If we want to have, have these big data sets, we, we can't do that. On, on this data set, what the orange graph is showing is basically that the absolute peak capacity in a chromatographic run, of course, goes up the longer the gradient becomes. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, and, and this, by the way, is from the new methods, right? Yes, So exactly. with nearly 400 in peak capacity, that's almost a factor of two up from earlier, yeah. earlier years. Yeah, might be. So such. <laughs> it, it is a, it is, it is a must. But it's tricky, right? I mean, yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's a huge improvement. Yeah, it is a huge improvement. But as you said, is that actually the most efficient use of mass spec time? No. Right. I mean, the best use of mass spec time is actually going the re reverse direction to shorter and shorter gradients yeah. because that actually makes the mass spec more efficient in terms of, you know, utilizing the peak capacity in, in the gradient. Exactly. So that so the optimum are. Yeah. And, yeah. Ends, right? and it's definitely where well, before you can't have it all. Yeah. No, and it's definitely if you look a couple of generations back in mass specs, I mean that's where the, the benefits were that's yes. in the shorter gradients where you can really utilize the super fast scan speed. Yeah. Yeah, and, and um, I mean you can only move in the direction of speed because the mass specs are becoming yes. faster. And and also that the way we use the mass specs are um, much more efficient. Obviously, having you know back back in the time where the duty cycle was was you know one MSMS was two seconds, right? It was like cycle time was six or seven seconds, and it was MS uh, of, the, of the three most abundant peaks. It's, it's, I mean, that would never work on these things, right? It's, it's now we're doing completely different work those. So, so I, I guess this is, I hope this is kind of a, a trend that next year we'll see even faster and more sensitive mass specs, and, and, and that's definitely going to help the argument of, mm -hmm. of, of the shorter gradients. And, and uh, yeah, food for thought. It's, it's yeah. again, it, it kind of, it, it, there's no real answer to kind of throughput versus depth. No. It's, it is really something that. It's really a every, consideration you need to take before yeah. designing your experiment. Yeah. And, and also being honest to yourself, not necessarily kind of going for depth. You know, 10,000 proteins might not be necessary in, in each sample, especially if you have tens of thousands of samples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah, I think I think we are uh, we are reaching the end of, of ASMS for EgoStep. Not quite. You still have a chance to ask questions and put them in the chat box. We'll be happy to answer. But it's it's been a very different experience this year. <laughs> it certainly has. It has. Yeah. Yeah. One to remember. <laughs> one to remember. I, I hope it's it's a one off. It's also. It's one -off, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we've learned a lot. We're still struggling a little bit with the technical stuff, but, but <laughs> maybe we we'll learn that until next year. But but I, th I think our kind of our virtual meetings, you know, they have improved a lot. Um, <laughs> I guess that goes for everybody. Um, yeah. So so yeah. feel free to put in questions. Um, there's still still time for one additional question. Sure. Yeah. We have five, five minutes left. Yeah. yeah. And maybe it's the chat for chat box acting up so that people come. Ah. 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 Um, <laughs> maybe so. maybe maybe we should just just finish up by by concluding because this is the last transmission we have from ASMS. So it is. from our perspective this has been a good year although what did we actually launch um no no new hardware from our side no no new box the evo set one is the same box as last year it's going to be the same box next year yeah i can promise you it's going to be the same box <laughs> two years from now um it's really a, a rock solid platform However, methods will change, things around it will change. And this year's introduction of the Ebosep Plus, uh, plus uh, ecosystem is a, quite a detour from you know, just having the five standardized methods. So the Ebosep Plus is an ecosystem that, as was said before, starts out with perhaps only a single launch method. It, it's no secret that this coronavirus thing put us back for months uh, <laughs> by not having access to collaborating partners and labs. Um, so, but there is this the extended method, which is now out. Uh, I know that there are uh, people in, in the past who have looked at the neighbors of one, thought it was a good idea, but needed the longer gradient and therefore couldn't really use it. And, and now there is this longer method. So it's there. Lipidomics is coming very, very soon. And then there's this whole range of ultra low flow where by design, 
I should not say coincidentally, <laughs> but <laughs> by design, it, it you know it just serves itself extremely, extremely efficiently. Well, um, proficient folk running ultra low flow rates. So there's a whole slew of things coming out there. But that's one box, one ecosystem, and and you can get it, you can get it all in one easy installation. But but that's really what we launched this year. New methods. Um, that's it. And I would add, add to that. I think one of the things that we've learned as a neutral and individual HPLC supplier in our communities, it's so important to work with the, our MOSFET vendor friends. Mm -hmm. And we, we've been working closely with, with several of them. Started out with the Thermal Brooker some years ago, developing many new methods and applications jointly with them. You know, we see crystallizing here at ASMS, uh, Thermal has launched their complete plasma analyze mm -hmm. solution with the sample preparation kits, all of it. And it was a, as part of that, which we're really proud of to be chosen as a partner to, to be part of such a solution. Mm -hmm. We're also happy to start working more actively with Accident this year. We, we did uh, formally engage in a co-marketing agreement where we did some hard work. You went to Santa Clara about, uh, well, half a year and more ago. Yeah. And that got turned into an application note that was released here at ASMS together with a press release. So Agilent is interesting because they have a different reach. So for us, it's interesting to work with these companies. And, and, and they perhaps have a, a slightly different focus on, on super cold pools, meds where, again, much of the work we've done in the past have already always been with high resolution instruments. Mm -hmm. But this combination of easy, robust, and very reproducible loading into a mass spectrometer combined with a quarter pole, which is a very easily used, robust, system i mean that that combination should lend itself really well to mm -hmm. a ton of new applications it's going to be it's going to be wonderful that's going to be exciting yeah. and in the end it's, it's all about the, the entire application the entire workflow right yeah. and, and i think it's it's so important to be be you know part of these i mean we we love being part of of, of pushing technology forward and and that's kind of it's the mass vendors it's, it's small companies like us and, and other small companies and it's the programmers community. And it, it is really kind of having these collaborations, you know, you know, trying out what we can do, pushing the boundaries, that's, it's fun. And, mm -hmm. and that can only be done if, if we work together. So it's, I think it's very important to stress that exact point. Yeah. 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 I, I think that that's what we have on I the board today. Yeah. So, so thank you very much for joining. Yeah. Right. If, if, if you want to know more, reach out. I mean, we are always happy to, to discuss uh, technology. We are happy to, to help. And uh, yeah, we look forward to meet you out there. Hope, yeah. Hopefully, next time, <laughs> it's 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 yeah. yeah. Great. Yes. Cheers. Bye. Bye now.